Well, now we want to begin to discuss some of the strange aspects of quantum mechanics. We've already hinted at this before. Now, we showed in the previous few lectures that the photoelectric effect and the Compton effect demonstrated that we must treat light as consisting of particles. So, the two experiments we discussed shown below could not be explained with a the wave theory of light, which was the classical uh, optics one we learned before. These results just cannot be explained that way. So now we get the, the first hint of strangeness, because the question we ask is, well, what about the earlier experiments? We haven't really mentioned that. Remember, we had experiments of diffraction, and we had the double slit experiment, which showed interference. So here we show the double slit experiment. We shine a laser on two uh, slits that are narrowly separated. We saw that we observed this banding, and it depended on the separation of these slits. And we also had the diffraction, which here we showed as water waves, but remember it also worked for light. And you can just look at your window and you see it. That light coming through this gap, it's spreading out. It's not coming straight through in an array. If it was purely particles, the rest of the room would be dark. You just have the shaft of light coming straight in from the window. But you don't. It diffuses around. It diffracts as it comes through the window. So these experiments cannot be explained with a particle view. So we have, we have some kind of problem here, it seems like. We have two different views. It's some experiments demonstrate that it's a particle. Some demonstrate that it's a wave. So how do we reconcile this problem? Well, the argument between particle and wave nature of light had been going on for a long time. This is nothing new at this point, but the result is novel. Newton originally had the idea that uh, photons were particles, and he did have some uh, experiments which led toward wave nature of light. However, his own beliefs were as particles, Others at the time thought there were waves. Later on, Young and others showed that via the uh, diffraction interference experiments that we must treat light as waves. And that was a dominant viewpoint throughout the 1800s, 1700s, and 1800s. And then comes along Planck and Einstein who come along and say, well, no, we must treat it as particles. So what is going on here? We, we seem to have two different ways of looking at light. Well, inner Niels Bohr, who did some work on early quantum mechanics, he came up with the principle of complementarity. Now, what he said is that light can be viewed as either a wave or a particle. It is both. So it is both a wave and a particle. Now, this is a strange concept. How can something be a wave and a particle? But what he said is the context that's important. In one experiment, only one viewpoint is to be used. So when we look at light, we only look at it in one particular way. This is the same as saying we do a particular experiment to measure the property of a light. The experiment determines which nature we're going to use. If we're doing a double slit experiment, we must view light as a wave. If we're going to do the photoelectric effect, then light must be treated as a particle, or else we get inconsistent results. Well, that was a strange concept for people to swallow. Things got more strange later on. But in 1923, Louis de Broglie, in his PhD thesis, extended the idea to all matter, all particles. He said that all particles should show both wave and particle attributes depending on how you look at it. They won't show it at the same time, but depending on how you look at it, they will exhibit both. All massive objects behave as waves with a particular wavelength, and he came up with this formula, lambda is equal to h over mv. Lambda in this particular case is a special wavelength, and it's called the de Broglie wavelength, and it's equal to Planck's constant divided by mv, the momentum of the particle. So the momentum of the particle determines the wavelength of the object we're examining. So this is a, a really strange concept. This is basically saying that you yourself can be viewed as a wave with some particular wavelength if you looked at yourself in the correct way. Well, let's see how this works. Let's look at a macroscopic case of something we know about. Let's look at a baseball thrown at 100 miles per hour, a very good fastball. Thrown at 100 miles per hour, what is the wavelength of this object? We can treat it as a particle. It will display wave properties. If we could somehow uh, set up a double slit experiment and throwing baseballs through there, we would see interference. However, it's, it's really not possible because of what we're going to show. The mass of a baseball is about 0.32 kilograms, and 100 miles per hour is about 45 meters per second. So that's a good fastball. 
Well, the wavelength in that particular case, then, is Planck's constant, which, remember, we said was 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34th joules per second, a very small number, divided by 14 kilogram meters per second. Well, that comes out to be 4.7 times 10 to the minus 35th meters. That is a small number. How small is that? Well, an atom, like a, a hydrogen atom, is about half an angstrom, which is 10 to the minus 10th meters. So a hydrogen atom is 10 to the minus 10th meters. This is 25 orders of magnitude smaller. That is an extremely small wavelength, and that's why we never observe the wave nature of a fastball.